let me let me share a few statistics with you too. We talked about Melvin McBroom sort of being an extreme example. Let, let me let me kind of uh, back up my claim that yes, maybe it's extreme, but I would argue maybe not that uncommon. This was a survey done a couple of years ago with nearly 10,000 employees from 300 different types of organizations across the United States. I will also say that my research has shown that this is very similar to any other international audience that you may look at. But the research says that 93% of people on a consistent basis avoided having a courageous conversation with a coworker around an important challenging issue. 93% on a consistent basis, not just once, but kind of ongoing. Why do you think that would be so high? They're coworkers. Can't we talk honestly and openly and have discussion with them? Why would we, why would we not have that? Why, why do you think? Okay, yeah, you, you know, we don't want to hurt their feelings. We don't want to say something that could damage the relationship. We've got to work with these people on a daily basis. You know, we don't want to be perceived as the know-it-all. So again, that's, you know, that's a powerful driver for us. You know, don't want to hurt people's feelings. I can understand the next one a little bit. 90, or excuse me, 89% of people said they have avoided, on a regular basis, consistent basis, a courageous conversation with their boss. Why do you think that is? Might get fired. Career limiting move. May not want to say something that could damage your relationship there too. Most of my work has been done with senior executives. And when they see this, their heads all just shake. And they say, that's just crazy. How many times do we have to tell people over and over and over and over again that, that as leaders of this organization, we need their feedback? We need their honest, open feedback. And I've had more than one CEO tell me that if there was anything that they could put their finger on that limits their ability to be successful as organizational leaders and the organization itself is people not giving leadership feedback. Now, again, we're not asking you to go in there and just slam people up against the wall. Well, maybe you want to. I don't know. Go in there and slam people up against the wall and say, hey, this is the way that it is. We're asking you to be productive about it, but don't hold back the things that need to be said that drive the business forward. Don't let the plane fall out of the air. Okay. This is the one that probably disturbs me the most. 81% of people who are in a leadership manager role have avoided those courageous conversations on an ongoing basis with their direct reports. Why do you think that is? They're your direct reports. You have authority. You have responsibility for this group of people. Okay, yeah, we're a little afraid of confrontation. Again, the employee's probably working hard, don't want to make them feel bad. You know, all of these drivers are very, very powerful within us. I guess the reason that this one sort of disturbs me is when I think about leadership, um, and this isn't in your workbook, this isn't in your binder, this is kind of my own personal philosophy, but I think there's really three roles to a people leader. One is to get the work done through others. You're no longer an individual contributor. You can't get all the work done yourself. Your responsibility is to get the work done through others. And the way you do that is to, is to develop your folks. And in my mind, one of the best ways to develop your folks is to make sure that you're giving them ongoing positive feedback as well as having those creative conversations as needed. Okay? And, and if you're doing those two things, the third thing that you have responsibility for in my mind is to be thinking and shaping the future for your team, your restaurant, the organization, whatever it may be. If you're so busy do, doing the work and you haven't developed your people, how are you ever going to have the time to be thinking, to be innovative, and thinking what the future might look like for everyone involved?